Hey everyone, you might recognize me and Eric here from the Nintendo Prime Podcast. I just want to let you know before you get into this segment that this merchandise you see on our shirts and on our cups and on anything else you ever see with Nintendo Prime brandy on it, you can get in the description below. You can also get the full audio podcast not segmented in the description below. And if you would like early access to our podcast, please go over to patreon.com slash Nintendo Prime. For $5 a month, you gain early access to the full audio podcast. And well, Mr. Eric, what do you get for $20 a month? Ooh, you get to join us on a podcast. That is right. So, if you would like to ever be on the Nintendo Pride Podcast, get your voice in front of thousands of other Nintendo fans out there. You know what to do. Hit up that $20 tier on Patreon. Anyways, folks, on to the episode. <laughs> Uh, so moving on to this next topic here, uh, we, we talked a little bit about the, the switch and all of this. Um, and this topic has to do with the Switch's insane success. Uh, and I say insane because Nintendo hasn't seen success like this in quite a while. Um, just to go, go through some of the numbers, we just had the MPD for September release, uh, and switch topped the sales charts in September. That is the third month in a row. That yep. Switch was number one in the U.S. Uh, and Switch has been number one in the U.S. five of its first seven months on the market. The other two months it wasn't. That's we're crazy. PlayStation 4. Um, it has now sold over 2 million units just in the United States. Uh, we also know yeah. it's at, or it's at I think, 2 million in Japan as well, if I remember right. Because um, they do, they have weekly sales updates there. So, uh, And I even note that here that it's actually been at the top of the weekly sales chart in Japan surprisingly every single week except for two and those are weeks that some uh some big games came out for i think one of them was for the 3ds and uh might have been monster hunter and the other one was for playstation 4 there was a game that came out that bumped it up for a week um and with all that success i think it's a given that it's obviously going to continue to have success at least for the next two months because you just look at the 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 releases coming up you have super mario odyssey on uh, the 27th Doom and hey, Snipper Clips. Well, we got the Snipper Clips Plus coming out as well, same day as Doom. Mm-hmm. Uh, LA Noir coming out three days after that on November 14th. Skyrim on November 17th. And what's interesting is that Doom and Skyrim, those are only coming to Switch during that time period. LA Noir is a multi platform release. Actually, it's coming out on Xbox One and PlayStation 4 that day. Um, Xenoblade Chronicles then hits like literally right after, uh, right after Black Friday's done. It's like, oh, Black Friday done. Or no, yeah. Yeah, Black Friday done. Boom! Here's the Xenoblade Chronicles now, and I'll go out and spend some more money. <laughs> we'll see if that release date's a good day if or not. Some. And then Rocket League. Uh, some people have been testing it already. Some people in the media. So uh, there's no official release date yet, but it's still slated for 2017. I'm a, I'm thinking they might be thinking sometime in December is kind of like their last game to come up for Christmas, or like a last major game to come up for Christmas on Switch. Uh so that's obviously really really great. The question is, they're on a they're on a torrid pace. C- can they keep this going? Because this has been an incredible first year. I think next year is going to be their biggest for the Switch, and then it will start to go down. Can I explain? I, uh, well, because we saw it with the Wii. Uh, came out what? Well, it came out at the end of 2006, right? Yep. And then 2007, it was an upward you know trend. And then 2008, I think, was the, was the peak. It was the peak, yep. And then it started to go down. So I think... Late next year, maybe holidays, it'll be it'll be huge again. But uh, after that, it'll start. I mean, it, it's it's still going to be insane. It's still going to be insanely popular. But uh, th- we'll start to see a, a dip, if you will. I don't think it's going to crash, but I, I I think after next year there'll be a, a, a substantial dip. After next year, yeah. um, not not because the hype's dying down or anything, but just because like it's it's now the now the console will be almost three years old at that point or two years i think it'll be interesting it'll depend to me if i i hope nintendo has learned something with the nintendo 3ds and ds um because the ds had a hardware refresh in the dsi the 3ds had a hardware refresh in the new nintendo 3ds so mm-hmm. if in 2019 they hit us with a hardware refresh of switch that has the tagra x2 and is like you know the new nintendo switch or whatever they call I it i think that'd be the perfect Time to do that. Yeah, absolutely. 2019. I mean, if they don't release it in 2019, version. they need to announce it in 2019. Um, right. But 
if they do that, I think it can actually have a longer lifespan because I think they've realized with the DS and 3DS that really helped extend the lifetime of those systems. Um, yeah. Because sales, oh, sales of 3DS are coming out. Oh, let's release the new 3DS XL. Mm-hmm. Um, and then all of a sudden sales boomed again because here's a more powerful system where Miiverse is a little better on it. Everything's a little snappier. It's got a little bit more power. Games run a little bit better on it. Heck, we ported Xenoblade Chronicles from Wii to it. Um, so that to me, uh, there's it's really a combination of things. I think if it can maintain success through 2019. And by the way, as Bob said, like success, you know, what does that mean? You know, right. Um, basically, mm-hmm. he feels like it's going to peak next year. And then, you know, slowly start to come down. Uh, and slowly start yeah, to come I, down and still uh, kicks the crap out of... Um, yeah, it'll still be the top dog. Yeah, it'll absolutely. still be like 50 million, 60 million. I mean, it's going to be... It's going to do insane numbers. I, yeah, I, I think that this is their their Wii. I think that it's going to, like, have best, best-selling best console potential. Like, top five yeah. best-selling consoles of all time. I think yeah. that so it definitely I'm, has potential to do that. I'm hopeful that instead of this being their Wii... Because the Wii was insane, and I agree on sales numbers. I think Switch is going to end up being, especially since Nintendo views it as a home console, it's going to end up being their best or second best selling home console they've ever released. Um, right. Obviously, it's a hybrid, so you can start looking at you know the the handheld side of things. But even then, it could become the second best potentially behind the DS. Uh, then mm. that's assuming mm-hmm. it gets over 100 million units, of course, which we we can't make that assumption it's going to happen. But until sales momentum says otherwise. You know, I mean, it's already going to probably beat the lifetime sales of the Wii U in, in the first year. Um, right. And that, that's just crazy. Uh, not as crazy as the Wii peak, per se, where it moved like 20 million units in 2008. But I think that... See, the, the problem I have with the Wii era is that it had this really, really high peak. And then it kind of slowly dwindled, like halfway through 2009. And then it just, like, bottomed out. That was it. Everything mm-hmm. sold in that first two and a half, three year period. Well, Um, I think it's because people were having a hard time coming up with um, new concepts for the gimmick that it it had. I mean, motion controls are great for so much. And then uh, how how much how many more things can we do with the motion controls at this point? And and they completely oversaturated it. Oh, it was oversaturated. But, But I think we might get a lot of that saturation with the switch because of the mobile games that are getting ported over. Sure. See, here here's where I, I kinda hope that the Switch is learns from the Wii era. Um and I think it already has by the fact it's a hybrid system. Mm-hmm. But I think one thing that hurt the Switch or hurt the Switch, hurt the the Wii, was that when it started coming down, if you actually look if you actually correlate Nintendo's own game releases, they stopped releasing games on the system. Right. They released yeah, right. all their heavy hitters in the first three years and then there was like nothing until Skyward Sword and Xenoblade came out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and by then, people were already moved on to 360s or moved on to their phones because, you know, smart devices came out. Mm-hmm. Um, at, at that point, Nintendo kind of lost their momentum and tried to get it back. But by the time they got it back, we were already talking about Wii U. Um, right. So I think that, or, or at least talking about what was next. I don't know if we knew Wii U was a thing at the time. But what what I, I'm hoping happens with Switch, and Switch has a unique advantage because it's a hybrid system, Nintendo's always had their games releasing on two platforms. Um, with If they can focus all of their development energy on a single platform, I think they can avoid that whole, oh, we, we busted our gut in three years and have nothing left um, until the next console yeah. cycle. I, I think that is one way they can avoid, maybe not that, not that they won't peak next year and decline, but they can avoid the steep decline. Mm-hmm. They can right. keep, at I least mean, until a console refresh comes. Console refresh is always like, bring things back up because even people who own switches will be like, Oh, I can get a faster switch with a bigger screen, a 1080p screen instead of 720p. Yeah. Or, or like 4k. That. Or, well, or whatever. it's not going 4k <laughs> eventually. Uh, okay. Uh, the reason I say it's not going to go 4k and maybe it'll do 4k Netflix or something. The Xbox one X can't even do native 4k. Yeah. Right. So like, they're, they're not going to make a portable version that does native 4k a few years from now. Yeah, they're people, saying, people there are, are saying that the dock will be able to yeah, upscale. Yeah, that's because but, of that, that patent, that know. supplemental computing device patent. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I buy that. Yeah, I mean, I well, I can I can tell you that that kind of stuff does kind of work because um, if you look at – well, if you look at things like the Raspberry Pi, you can stack those and they get more and more powerful. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's, it's possible uh, 
to, to do that. I mean, am I going to say that Nintendo is definitely going to do that? No. I have no idea. Well, well but, like the PS4 Pro, that's that's upscaling to, to, to 4K. Yeah. Even, even oh, PS, yeah. PlayStation 4 games that came out at launch, a lot of them were still 720 upscaled to 1080. Yeah. The, the argument yeah. for, for the 4K dock thing basically exists because uh, you have the the patent out there, of course, that showed a supplementing computing device plugged in uh, that added power. Two, the Switch uses mm-hmm. USB-C, which we already know with laptops, you can hook up external GPUs to it um, and yep. boost your right. gaming. Now, that's just GPUs. It doesn't include the CPU. So, like, if they were doing something like that, they'd have to already have enough CPU power in the first place, which the CPU is actually one of the weakest components of Switch. Uh, but maybe that's fixed with the Tegra X2 or wh- whatever they could stuff in that thing on a, on a console refresh. Maybe we're talking Tegra X3 by the time they do it. I have no idea. Um, I, think, I think at most you're getting an upscaler in the dock at very most, and and you're never getting native 4K out of this thing. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm not expecting yeah. that. You're I, I don't expect it. The only thing I expect is if there's an uh, if there's any sort of 4K anything, it's just gonna be media. Mm-hmm. You, you can already do mm-hmm. 4K. Off of little thumbsticks, but, that you but, in your but TV. to the TV, never, uh, never portable. Yeah, no, yeah, n- not portable. But well, the thing is, when you're portable, you're stuck to whatever resolution the screen is, anyways. And they're not yeah, putting may, may, a maybe in a screen. refresh, we'll get a 1080p screen. Yeah, that, that's what I figured. I figured for a refresh, uh, it'll the, they could call it the XL. Uh, they just get rid of the bezel, so they they just literally it's the same size as the Switch today. But because they get rid of the bezel, they add like a full inch to the screen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they make the screen 1080p. They put a, a little bit bigger battery in there to support the, the 1080p and the bigger screen. Um, and then you have yep. the Tiger X2, which is actually more power efficient than the Tiger X1. So maybe they won't even need a bigger battery. I don't know. Uh, they'd have to test that on their end. And boom, there you go. You have, you have better hardware, better screen. Um, you know, maybe instead of the plastic on the screen, because right now it's a plastic cover on it, maybe they'll go mm-hmm. with a Gorilla Glass or something. Um and just overall, it's just a better system, but you still play all, both systems still play all the same games. Mm-hmm. Um, right. Just a, you know, it'll be like the the it'll be like when you play like uh, Hyrule Warriors on the original 3DS. Hopefully, it's not this bad because Hyrule Warriors in the original 3DS you should not play. It runs at like five <laughs> FPS. <laughs> but when you Jeez. play when you play it on uh, on the new 3DS, it's 30 FPS like lock. It actually runs better. It the frame rate of Hyrule Warriors on new Nintendo 3DS. Is more consistent than the frame rate of higher warriors on Wii U. It's crazy. I don't know why that's the case, but that's just what happened with the game. Um, so I think you can see things like that. Uh, but if they do that, then obviously the the Switch's you know current success um, could be maintained because this isn't a peak yet. Right. I don't think any of us think this is this is the, as high as it's going to get. Oh, um, no, absolutely no, not. Definitely not. And I think a huge part of this. Uh, in comparison to like the Wii and even some of Nintendo's past systems, is third-party support. Uh, yes. Yeah. Right now, obviously, the games we're seeing like L.A. Noire, Skyrim, Doom, you know, older games. Uh, but Castle, you know, the, what was it? The Wolfenstein Two, the New Colossus. Yes, technically, by the time it comes out, it'll be like a, a six-month older game or something. But uh, I think that's just because the decision to port it just came too late. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and they wanted to prove it with Doom first, and they, they did that now, so they'll, they'll bring over that game. Uh, but 2018, I think, you know, it, if we're going to see a Call of Duty, it's, it's next year's Call of Duty. Mm-hmm. Um, right. If we're going to see Madden, it's next year's Madden. If we're going to see... Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, heck, maybe NBA 2K18 ended up selling enough, so they bring NBA 2K19 over. These big AAA publishers, they... they didn't want to waste their money on, on a dud if it was going to be a dud and, and again. You, but, but everyone, now, yeah, and you but can't now blame they them. can dump some money into it because now they're seeing the potential. Yeah, and, and the thing is, you can't blame them. Um, right. It, it's, no, absolutely not. Nintendo has, even when they had that big success with the Wii, m- traditional AAA publishers did not see big success. Oh, unless no, they made games specifically for that audience, like a Just Dance. Mm-hmm. But then uh, for every Just Dance, there's companies that tried to make games for that audience, like the U Draw, and it sank the entire company. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, I remember so that. So it, it's like th- that's why that's when Nintendo really started getting the reputation. Only Nintendo games sell to <laughs> Nintendo fans. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, yeah, but I mean, Ubisoft was able to pull it off because they found a formula that worked in this very, very similar way that Wii Sports did, mm-hmm. um, which was very smart. I, I'm surprised that Nintendo didn't actually come up with something like that first. But good on good on you know Ubisoft 
for that. And, and if you think about it, Justin, it's still around today, so it's obviously still selling enough to justify uh, to keep mm-hmm. making it and keep bringing it to every E3 and make people on the show floor dance. <laughs> um, I don't, they still do that every three. People keep doing it. People like acting like fools and getting on those YouTube videos. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> um, but I just think it's very interesting when, when you look at that that trajectory. I think an, another big aspect, because obviously I mentioned it before, all of Nintendo's games on one platform, uh, Nintendo continually supporting it. Uh, I don't know if Nintendo's going to have a ton of games next year. I know we know of like a handful of them. Mm-hmm. And obviously there's going to be a bunch of games we don't know about. I mean, you think about games like an Animal Crossing. How is that going to do on Switch? Mm-hmm. That's going to be insane. Like, look what it did on 3DS. Yeah. I mean, there's no way in heck an HD Animal Crossing is not going to blow up. People have been wanting yeah. it forever, and they just keep going. To, oh, yeah. Hey, here's Amiibo Festival. I'm like, what? We're getting that on the phone. That's you know, going to be a huge. That's going to be. Yeah. Oh, the insane. phone. Yeah. The phone that's a perfect awesome. place for it. It is. It really is. My wife, um, when we got a Wii U, uh, one of the big reasons that I was able to talk her getting into getting getting a Wii U uh, was because she wanted Animal Crossing, and then we <laughs> found out that the Animal Crossing was the Amiibo Festival. Yeah, uh, oh, and oh, she was so, so upset. Yeah, um, if you don't mind, though, I'd like to uh, give my thoughts on 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 my uh, for you know in, yeah. in what I'm seeing for this. Yeah, go for it. I think the big thing that Nintendo has to do here um, is Nintendo has a big history, at least with these last few consoles, of shooting themselves in the foot. Um, and they seem to do that when they're on the upswing. And that really, like, man, how you, it's like you're, you're in the final leg of the race towards the finish line and then you shoot yourself in the foot. How do you do that every time? That really, really irks me about Nintendo. <laughs> and they really need to stop doing that. I mean, they're only going to get so far in nostalgia. I mean, let's be honest, a lot of us, I mean, releasing Breath of the Wild with the Switch was genius pure genius and the reason is because a lot of the people who are waiting for this for for a zelda for as long you know as long as we were were chopping at the bit to get a new zelda game so releasing that with the switch at launch was pure genius tomo please don't do that um and uh, i'm sorry my cat's up here being i, know, I kind of figured that <laughs> yeah um i have a cat and a dog and they, they both like to bug me when i'm not paying attention to them oh, of course. but um <laughs> yeah yeah but um they like i said it, it, and it's like you it's like you brought up with the Wii. the Wii was doing really well and then it peaked and then they just shot themselves in the foot and didn't release anything else and they just let it die and then when they were going to do an upswing i mean if they would have marketed the wii u as like even if they would have marketed if they would have marketed the wii u as its own console or even as like an upgraded version of the wii then it would have done well but nobody knew what the heck the wii u was and for you yeah yeah, right exactly (laughs) so it's like they shot themselves in the foot on that aspect as well because the wii u could have definitely been marketed as like a hardware refresh and and it probably, you know, and they're like, hey, look, we're offering you more ways to play. You guys can probably see my cat's tail in the in the video. Yeah. But, um, oh, yeah. <laughs> but um, you know, they could have marketed it as a hardware refresh and like, hey, we have more ways to play now, you know, as well as better hardware. Don't do that. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm sorry. But, that's that's um, the problem with the Wii U is that they, they, they didn't explain enough that it was different than the Wii. A lot of right. people thought it was the same. It was just like an add-on to the Wii. And that's that's the thing is if they would have said, hey, look, there's more ways to play. There's more ways to do things. And then the other thing was a lot of people, when they saw it, I know when I saw it, I was like, wow, it's actually a portable console because of the way yeah. that they marketed the freaking pad. Mm-hmm. And that was that was such a letdown for people. You know what I mean? It, it honestly Once shouldn't people- have existed. It should have just been the Switch. <laughs> <sighs> or... I always argued, I actually made a video on this once, what if the Wii U wasn't the Wii U and instead was the Wii HD and released in 2010? Yeah. Because you know, drop the gamepad, just take the Wii, like take the Wii U hardware itself, the HD nature of it, 
backwards compatible with Wii games, release HD texture packs, and just offer, uh, just pack in like the Pro Controller and let all your old Wii, Wii accessories work with it. That would have been way too forward thinking for Nintendo. I, well, that's <laughs> that, that, was... that, that, but see, that's what makes Switch so crazy. Yeah. Because Switch is forward thinking. Yes. It, it is, yeah. Yes. Like, well, I would I would argue that it, it's, it should have been done five years ago. Well, right. Well, well, I mean, you can argue that, but ago. I mean, the technology only came into existence three years ago. For the, for well, the I mean, it's, yeah. it's just a tablet with some controllers slapped on it. it. It's a little more than that because the GPU itself is custom tailored for gaming. It was created for the purpose of now. Yeah, yeah yes, uh, but you know, three years ago, you would have had just a crappier GPU in there. Well, yeah, yeah. Three, three years ago, you're not getting Breath of the Wild on this thing. Yeah, it, that, that's Nintendo though. They don't <laughs> go with with the best graphics. Well, no, you know, I know, they, I know. But I think one of the major selling points of the Switch, and I think this is what makes me feel. So far, we're thinking about it. Regardless of, you can make all the arguments about how much weaker it is than the Xbox One and blah, 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 blah. All the power debates. I think that's that's irrelevant. But when you grab the system and you play it and you play these games, it feels like you're playing a console quality game on the go. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a huge selling point. So, like, if you're using, like, uh, just straight up old school mobile tech uh, in eras when the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One exist, it ain't going to feel like you're you're playing. It's just going to feel like you're playing... Um, HD version of 3DS stuff. Right. Um, and so I think that, that's why it actually made sense. Now, arguably, they should have, 2016 would have been a better year, in my opinion, to release it. But it is what it is. They had their reasons to, to wait till early 2017. But um, it's, yeah. I mean, it's still doing. Yeah. The there's best. no, I mean, obviously, you can't say, oh, they made a mistake. I mean, what, where's the mistake? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 Nintendo has the bankroll to make mistakes. And, and, and they, they they're innovative. They're the only ones who are in their yeah. own space. I, like they, I, they they can they can afford to make mistakes. I think Nintendo like I don't know. I I think they get something out of going near ruin and then bringing themselves back. Like I don't know. They're very what, creative, at least. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I don't know. Maybe maybe you know maybe they enjoy that or something. I, I, I mean, it's it, masochistic. I think. Well, <laughs> well, you know, the funny thing about that is, is that my my grandfather always had this saying. It was it was a joke, and he's saying, you know, there's little kids at the back of the room banging his head against the wall, and the teacher says, Johnny, why are you doing that? And he goes, Well, because it feels so good when I stop. I feel like that's Nintendo <laughs> yeah. sometimes. Yeah, yeah it's. I, I think that's it's just a side effect of making innovative products that nobody else is making. Everybody and, else is everybody else is playing oh, it yeah. safe, and, and that's yeah, my they're, huge. They're thing. not afraid to make mistakes. That's my huge thing with the with with the with the Switch. I'm afraid that the okay. So the the Switch is a is a novelty product. Um, it's not going to compete graphically it's not going to compete um you know in in any in any other way with the big consoles other than the fact that it's portable and and that's that's the the switch's gimmick so to speak and nintendo i say to to nintendo to continue this progress they need to either find a way to make that work um moving forward and finding new and creative ways i mean like let's think let's think let's think of it this way um pokemon go was was Mm -hmm. you know it's the same thing pokemon go came out and um that i mean it was the most downloaded mobile game ever for a time and then it died out really quick you know what i mean It, it did very very well and then died out really quick and i think the switch can do that if nintendo can't find a way to sustain the Switch's success um, once the novelty of you can take things on the go wears off. Yeah, I think Nintendo with the Switch, and this is the, the thing we have to worry about because we, we watch them squander the Wii. We watch them, I mean, even with the 3DS, technically right now the 3DS is still Nintendo's worst-selling handheld ever released, yep. which is crazy considering the numbers it's done, but that just shows you how popular... Like everyone says, oh, you're just comparing it to the DS. I'm like, no, I'm comparing it to every handheld they've released. It's the worst yeah. selling. Um, so you could argue Nintendo even dropped the ball there. Nintendo has this thing where they, I, I seem, at least with the Wii and DS, they they got into this mindset where they were relying on the branding. They felt the brand was bigger than the product. So and, slap and Wii it, yeah. on the Wii U, it's going to sell it. Sell mm-hmm. slap DS on a 3DS. 
that you know even with a similar looking product it's going to sell it instead of them focusing on what does the market want and it, even if like there clearly was still a market for th- for 3ds like systems you know mm-hmm. for ds like systems but they kind of lost sight of wh- what how do you name it how do you uh, market it what do you do with it that makes it feel distinctive because for a lot of people especially with the og 3ds when it came out it just looked like another dsi it, it, oh yeah it, it didn't look yeah. like oh, oh so you added a 3d functionality that looks cool but most people don't care about it okay what what can this do my dsi can um and yeah it was more powerful or whatever but uh what we need to see with switch and this is going to be for especially for it's you know we, we talked about you know, a hardware refresh I think what we need to see with Nintendo is them dedicate themselves to this direction. Instead of getting four years out from now and all of a sudden Nintendo, because they're risk takers, they do crazy things. We just talked about it. Then decide we're going to completely shift all our directions into this other product that's 100% different from this. Um, You need to create some, I I suck at saying this word, uh, continuity (laughs) or whatever. Continuity. 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 There you go. I suck at saying that word. Um, because if you notice, what has kept the PlayStation brand so strong over the years is you know the next PlayStation is PlayStation 5. Yeah. Okay? You know what you're getting. You know that Sony is dedicated to the direction that they've been taking their consoles in. So if you own a PlayStation 4 and you're happy with the PlayStation 4, you know you're going to be happy with the PlayStation 5. Because mm-hmm. Sony has shown you consistency, at least in yeah. terms of their direction of their systems. Now, obviously, you know they went crazy with the cell processor and overpricing the PlayStation 3 and got cocky, but they bounced back. Right, mm-hmm. they lowered the price. They ate losses, and they showed dedication to consumers. Say, okay, we're not going to do that again. PlayStation Four, we're going X eighty six. We're making it more standard, um, and they obviously got a, a nice boost because you know Microsoft screwed up so bad with their marketing that they capitalized well, on that. You go from Xbox to Xbox three sixty to Xbox One. Where are you going with this? Yeah. You could have went yeah. Xbox five forty, Xbox seven twenty. Yeah. I mean, the, yeah, where are you going Confused with this? Also, maybe not make it five hundred dollars. Maybe yeah, not. yeah. Not yeah. say, oh, we need it's. You have to have connected to the system won't work. Oh. Yeah, you know, you know what's funny is um, I I seen a thing that uh, that the Sony had had wrote on that um, that Microsoft had gone for full circle with the Xbox One, and it was it was funny because it it worked on so many different you know that that played on so many different things mm-hmm. that was going on at the time. Like it was the successor from the 360 and it was, you know, the fact that they had gone completely backwards, you know, the 360 was all about games and then the Xbox one's like, Oh, it's, you know, everything. And it, and it, it they really did. They went full circle on everything. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it kind of just that, that almost killed the Xbox one. I mean, it was so, they were so close to just bombing that entire generation. I know it's what I Nintendo needs to learn from everyone's mistakes, really, because it was a mistake yeah. Xbox made, a mistake Nintendo has made several times in the past. Um, they they need to dedicate to a direction that they're in now and show that dedication. Obviously, with the hardware refresh, and then when they even announce like a new thing, I don't care if you call it Switch Two. I don't care mm-hmm. if you call it the Super Switch. Mm-hmm. Um. Just something that clearly says, this is a brand new system. It's everything you know and love about our product that's out in the market right now. And yep. by the way, it does all this other awesome stuff um, that to enhance gaming that you didn't think about. The other thing I still think... still risk take and keep the primary thing together. Instead of being like, yeah, this is the same product you know and love, and we're just going to toss a three on the, on the name of it. I think it just needs to be very clear that it's a it's a sequel. It's, yes, it's a, it's yes, a, yeah, yes, that's what, yeah, a, a sequel. It needs to be very clear. It can't be like Wii U where it's confusing. It can't be three DS where it's confusing. It has to be very clear that this is a direction we're dedicated to. This is very clearly a new product that's in the same line of products. The old games won't work on this thing. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that's what and, they need to tell people. <laughs> I, I think honestly they they need to maintain some backwards compatibility if they're going to do a switch two or something. Right. Um, and yeah, um, the only time I mean, I'm they, sorry, I, I I meant the new games won't work on your old garbage. Oh <laughs> no, right. Yeah, I actually argued at one point. Uh, it's been a long time since I talked about this. That I think what Nintendo needs to do with Switch is is almost be the first video game company to take a single product and kind of make it like what phone manufacturers do where not necessarily yearly refreshes. That's, that's, that's too insane. 
but like every three years or so, you have a hardware refresh. Excuse you. That, that, that builds on top of that product. Um, doesn't forget the old product, but you know, say I, I think I think my, my when I was thinking about this, you have you have your your mid generation upgrade, the first three years out, right? That's the Switch XL or whatever. Three years after that, and that that's fully backwards compatible. All games work across platforms. The okay. next version comes out, and the original Switch is no longer compatible with the brand new games. But the Switch XL can still play them at a lower quality setting or whatever the case may be. Um, yeah, and, and you just slowly phase off older hardware that way while, while maintaining some backwards compatibility over time. Um, and as always, I mean, I always felt like you know you could argue that the latest system should be able to play all Switch games for all time. I think that's going to eventually change because I think I hate saying this, but I feel like thirty years from now there's not going to be like a, a physical medium anymore. Um, so those OG Switch cartridges are probably not going to be useful. Mm-hmm. Unless you own an older version of the Switch, I, I, I think that's the whole iterative console thing. That's what like people think Sony and Microsoft are going towards with these uh, yeah. pros and the, and the X yeah. and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. That the I actually like, I think this is a good direction for the whole of the gaming industry because it's very clear this is the direction tech has gone. Um, the tech industry in general has gone to this iterative stuff. I, I I don't know if I buy it because like for for, for something like the PlayStation. Four and the Xbox One, sure. they, they they want to occupy a space that like um, the premium gamers are going to want this because they want more power. Sure, but the premium gamers are on PC. They, they, if they want this power, they're going to be on PC anyway. So yeah. why the hell would they buy this little in between thing? Yeah. That's just way well, too well. Expensive, that's where Switch you know? has the advantage because compared to everything else, it is portable, and right. there's, no, there's nothing like that on the market but your mobile phone and your tablet. But um, but what what are you suggesting for a uh, for like a Switch two like like how would that be like why would I buy that if I already have a Switch and I could play the same games on my Switch? Well, the Switch two, uh, just as like an example, obviously you, you have the Switch, then you have the Switch XL. Those are like same generation kind of kind of like the iPhone seven, iPhone seven S, whatever that kind of stuff. Or I guess they didn't do a seven S; they went straight to eight. I, Apple does weird things. Now. I don't yes, know what they're going to go And, and there's, there's iPhone 10, which I understand like the 10 number, 10 year, whatever. I don't know what, what Apple's doing these days. Uh, but okay, better example. 5, 5S, 4, 4S, 6, 6S. Those are all same generations mm-hmm. uh, with, with hardware, you know, iterative hardware in there. Um, I feel like that's kind of the direction of the Switch where where you have the Switch and Switch XL. That's one generation. Then you hit the Switch 2. The Switch 2 um, can do stuff that the original Switch can't do anymore. I don't know if it ends up being, at that point, 4K gaming on the go. I don't even know. That's going to be a possibility someday. I don't know when. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, even if you're not looking at... Because even if it's 4K gaming on the go, it's certainly not going to be whatever Xbox 2's 4K gaming is or what PlayStation 5's 4K gaming right. is. You know, it's not going to be equal to that, but it doesn't need to be. What it needs to be is, it, is as a dedicated gaming device, it needs to basically be the best dedicated gaming device on the market every three years. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Uh, for handheld gaming. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's what I kind of feel. And if they're doing that, the old hardware is just going to, just like phones, is going to naturally kind of phase out where it's all, you can always play it. It's always going to be relevant. They're never going to shut the online off for it because it's all one united Nintendo account system. So they have no reason to shut up. Like you you want to keep paying $20 a year for your online servers on the OG Switch 10 years from now. Why would they stop you? And that's another thing, though, is that um, Nintendo has a, a bad habit of like, um, th- it, I know that you can transfer your account from the Wii U over to the Switch, but kind they of. really uh, kind of, but you really should, you you know, you really should. There, well, there was no reason that they couldn't have seamlessly brought that over especially w- with the fact that they're shutting down the Wii U's o- online stuff anyway you know they should have been able to kind of help help you bring that over a little bit more seamlessly and yeah their, their I, online they, structure needs they, a lot of work they, the the Wii U i felt like it was a remnant of the past it was before they this Nintendo account system they use now is new um right so it was a nightmare getting my 3DS account onto my Wii U oh. Yeah, Wii U. That was a absolute. Nightmare. I mean, how they handled even Wii to Wii U, like you're basically just launching a Wii inside of a Wii U. It, they, I, I feel like the Nintendo account system is the first time they they've really grasped onto modern account account systems, and I feel like because the Wii U wasn't on a system like that, while you're able to connect your Wii U account to your Nintendo account, technically you're not bringing your Wii U account 
to Switch. It's the Nintendo account that your Wii U account is connected to. Um, yeah. And I feel like that's just because they finally realized, I don't know why it took them this long, but they're Japan, and for some reason they just didn't pay as much attention as Sony did, that mm-hmm. these universal online account things need to be a thing. Because that's what the Nintendo account is. Uh, I saw somebody do an account transfer, because you can now transfer accounts on your Switches. So you want to transfer, like, I get a brand new Switch, and I want to move my account over. I can do it, and it's really easy. I actually saw a video of someone doing it. I'm like, holy crap, that's intuitive and simple. Why has it taken this long to be that simple? Yeah. Because Nintendo never had a proper universal account system. That's really what it is. Yeah. Yeah, and I think the big the big issue with Nintendo is the fact that they're like, well, you know, software sells the hardware. Sure. And and I think that they honestly do stick to that, but they stick to that so laser focused that they don't see anything else. It's yeah. like how can we add value in other places really doesn't come up in their minds very yeah. often. It's that, I think that's why how I, can we get the most out of our, our first party titles? And then that's it. Yeah. I, that's why I, I don't know who Nintendo is right now with the switch. Mm-hmm. Their marketing was brilliant. Yeah. It showed games, but it showed the appeal of the hardware itself. Right. Right. Yep. The, the reason as awesome as Breath of the Wild is, potentially with Super Mario 64 or whatever, one of the best launch games ever to exist for a platform. The reality is that a huge reason that is often overlooked on why the Switch is blowing up is because the Switch itself, regardless of games, is attractive. It's oh, understandable, yeah. simple to get. All the commercials were very it, it, focused. It fills a need. Yeah, like, it fills a need. It does. Yeah. And, and it, it, what's nice is that this Nintendo is one that one is, is nailing the marketing of the platform itself, mm-hmm. the, not not the games, the platform. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. On top of that, they not only are nailing the marketing of what this platform is and making it attractive, the audience they're going after is specifically gamers and adults. That they literally at the press event in January set it up like a casino to try to appeal to older people older gamers or lapsed yeah. gamers or, or people who just don't have the time. Like that's, that's, that's the niche, right? People who don't have the time for the, the modern console mm-hmm. sit down and, and play for hours at a time gaming. Um, oh yeah. I take my switch when I have to take my wife to the, to the doctor or if I got to take my dad nice. to the doctor, mm-hmm. yeah. I, I, yeah, I'm able to go play breath of the wild or, um, you know, I, I pretty much, I have breath of the wild, um, and I have like Binding of Isaac and stuff like that. Those are all games that are that are awesome to play on the go. Um, and I think one of the big things they need to do if they do a hardware refresh is definitely figure out the battery. Sure. Yeah. yeah. The, definitely. Absolutely. The, the, I don't know what they can do about the battery. The, I, I think if they get a faster process or like a better well, I mean, more the, energy efficient processor yeah, well, in there. Nice the Tegra X2 is more powerful and more energy efficient so that like that's obviously an obvious upgrade. I think uh battery wise um one th- issue Nintendo is probably running into and maybe they're going to have to uh if they're going to stick with this mobile future the, this hybrid type future um they're going to have to eventually maybe be one of the first companies in the industry to finally invest in creating better battery technology mm-hmm. um we've actually been sticking with that lithium battery for so long believe it or not i was watching something recently that they were talking about um they found a way to take nuclear waste and turn it into a crystal mm-hmm. that oh, yeah. holds power like for years and no. you can power things like your your phone or your sure. tablet for years. I think the big problem that they're having is probably, um, and like I said, this is this is mostly speculation, just from yeah. something that I've heard from random sources. But if this is true, then um, if Nintendo was able to get on top of that technology for the Switch, and you had a Switch that could last for days or years at a time. That would be huge. Yeah, it's one of those. I mean, things they could do like, a lot more with that technology. Oh yeah, just, there's a know, lot. You video games. <laughs> yeah, but I, I think just because we've been stuck with the same type of batteries for you know decades or more, I, I someone needs to finally take their billions and be like, look, 
we have this amazing platform. We need to invest in trying to create some better battery tech. Let's yeah. actually push it forward yeah, that's, because that's that nuclear Tesla. thing sounds crazy. The, 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 the reason it sounds crazy, like not just because it's insane how much power you can get out of it, which really should, I mean, we're talking about nuclear here, right? Like, right. Mm-hmm. of course, it's obviously always going to be that, that the hard sell of telling someone, hey, in your hand, you're holding a little nuclear power. Um, yeah. Even, right. if, you know, that that's always going to be a tough sell, whereas lithium, it's not really that tough of a sell. Where you're gonna, you might get a little explosion, you might have a little fire, not a big deal. Or in the case of like the, the Note 7, just blow up your whole car. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the battery tech, I think, like, I'm I'm okay. I'm satisfied with the battery level on Switch just because I don't know what else they could do besides just putting a bigger one in. Um, and there's things you have to consider with that, space, heat, uh, weight. Well, um, I mean, for people, uh, like, my car, for some reason, will not charge my Switch if it's on. Yeah. If I turn my Switch off, it'll charge it. Sure. Um, and I think that's a problem with a lot of people's a lot of people's cars. It, it, it takes um, way too much power uh, while huge... you're playing it. Yeah, yeah. A lot, a lot of things like portable battery banks. A lot of those things can't charge it while you're while it's on the switch. Yeah, right. Well, and cool. I would be fine. I would be fine if it just maintained the battery level. Yeah. Mm. Actually, uh, I don't know if you saw my Rav Power video. Um, there's these, this wrap one of the wrap power, power power banks I have. If your switch is already at 100% and you plug it in, your switch will stay on for like 18 hours. Damn. Really? Yeah. I think I have the one that you're talking about. It, it's, but, it's, uh, but it, it has to be. I haven't actually it has used to be it like, like that. Well, it could be like 90%. It will charge it um, like while you're playing. Like I was playing Breath of the Wild. You will gain, but you'll gain it so slow you're not going to notice it and you won't get as much. It basically just right. maintains. Where but you're yeah, at. It, it, slightly, with the slight, slightly with the slight over, charge. Yeah, slightly over maintain. Um, but yeah, yeah it's uh, that. That was the one thing I was like, because they were like, "Oh, you could fast charge." And I'm like, "Yeah, it ain't that ain't working." But mm-hmm. I can do this, and that is insane because I know I'm going to go on the go, or I'm going to be say I'm on, on a plane and I'm going to head on over to the UK or something, and I'm on a plane for eight hours. Well, my switch is going to last the whole time, no problem. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, but that's also you know using a twenty six thousand milliamp hour battery bank. Uh, Comp- yeah, they're, they're, not gonna right. fit that, they're not going to fit that in the switch. I mean, the the battery make itself almost weighs more than the whole switch does. Uh, yeah. So, so it's kind of like that's kind of an extreme situation. I, you know, the other thing too that the, that might be that might be worth it, and this is just spitballing, sure. but uh, having a removable battery so you can like yeah. have one charged. You know I what I mean? About and then, that? Because that that's something some people miss with cell phones is removable batteries. Uh, I just don't know if that would be a mass consumer accepted thing, especially now that most phones are remo- are going away from that too. Sw- I mean, I don't. Batteries. I, I don't really see a reason why it wouldn't be accepted. Um, especially, you know, I mean, personally, I I have, and I I, I talked a little bit about this um, in the Nintendo Prime Discord, which you guys should yep. definitely join, by the way. <laughs> um, and um, I, I have an S7 Edge, and there's some things that I really hate about the <laughs> S7 Edge, and one of them is the battery life. Sure. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. The battery on the S7 Edge is horrid. It sure is. And um, I wish it had a removable battery. I mean, I would buy, like, an aftermarket battery, or I sure. would, you know, buy a second battery or something like that. So, I mean, I, I honestly yeah. think... If it, just having that option w- sure. is enough for most people, I, I just don't know. Um, because obviously the ideal situation is it just doesn't have need, need a, a removal battery in the first place. It's all about user convenience, right? We're, we're talking about yeah. a product that right now feels convenient, mm-hmm. um, and battery is definitely something that needs to be addressed in the future. Uh, but they need to do it in a way that's still convenient to the user. If you're telling a user, hey, while you're on the go. Your system might die in the middle of a game, but you can just take off the back and swap a battery, and you might have lost your progress, but whatever. Um, that I don't think they're going to view that as an acceptable solution. Um, well, they'll view it as a, a potential solution. Like People don't mind yeah. swapping it on cameras, right? Because you just don't have a choice, and video recording is obviously pretty intense. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So, But that's also different. Like The people who are going to swap batteries uh, are using real cameras are also kind of like like you. Like, like you're, you're like a developer. I'm a YouTuber. Uh, Mm -hmm. mom's a youtuber like we're i don't think we represent the common people when it comes to this stuff what we would do to maintain our electronics is i don't think what a majority of people who buy switch 
Majority right. people own cell phones. The reason that they don't have swappable batteries anymore, I think, is because people hated or always complained about, oh, my gosh, I dropped my phone and the back popped off, and I don't know what to do. My SIM card fell out. Um, yeah. And, and that is one of the things that they try to do with the Switch is make it very durable. Thousand foot um, drop, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Although, I mean, they're like, oh, it survived a thousand foot drop. I'm like, well, yeah, because it landed on the Joy-Con. Yeah. <laughs> That's the, the thing. The Joy-Cons oh. act as like a bumper. Yeah. The yeah. Joy-Con protected it. But, I mean, it, if, the, well, if you just drop the Switch without the Joy-Con, I don't know if it's going to survive that thousand foot drop. Well, so so here's here's an interesting idea uh, for the whole little battery thing. What if you had a tiny internal battery that lasted a few minutes? Don't tell light a hot swap. What's up? To, to allow you to hot swap. Yep, exactly. So yeah. if you you know if your battery gets low and you're like, oh crap, and then you're <laughs> able to like pull the battery off and it'll last a minute that. or two, and you'd be able to put a new battery in, like a reserve battery. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. No, everything you're saying is awesome. I just don't think the general consumer base would ever yeah. take advantage of it. I mean, even I mean, when like we I have said, remo- it's just ideas. Yeah, no, like even when we have removable batteries, most people I know never have extra batteries. Yeah. Um, it was a very niche group of people that were like, yeah. Even now, like you hear people say, oh, uh, I wish that, oh, if you would just remove the back, I would put it in. You'd see like Unbox Therapy say that. I'm like, yeah, but you do not, re- you're a tech enthusiast, right? Like you don't right. represent, you are willing to sacrifice convenience for practicality, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think all right. of us are willing, like, we will sacrifice, you know, yeah. even if the Switch has a slightly bigger form factor, we will sacrifice that for practicality reasons but- well you also have to think about uh from from this from from uh from this standpoint too um the switch is a game console that is focused around i mean when the switch came out it had like accessories for it already sure. you know what i mean sure. and and people are used to buying accessories for their consoles yeah and I mean, your phone is a phone. You're, I mean, what do you do with it? You make calls, you check Twitter, you know what I mean? Yeah. So you're not in a situation where if my phone dies, I don't care. You know what I mean? And it's like, I'll just charge my phone somewhere. But if you're in the middle of a game and all of a sudden your switch dies, you know what I mean? It, I think it's a slightly different, uh, uh, a slightly different approach when it comes to game consoles. Sure. No, yeah. I hear you. Um, and 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 that might be and and like I said, we're we're just kind of it's it's semantics here at this point. Sure. But I think it's definitely a good conversation to have at least because yeah. you know then we could. You know, I mean, because people may end up weighing in on you know with their uh, thoughts and opinions who are that you know consumer you know um, uh, convenience sort of people and what they think about it. And eventually that might be something Nintendo sees and, and, you know, and draws ideas from, and that would be awesome. But I, I definitely think that, um, the, the console market versus like the mobile phone market is slightly different, even though Nintendo seems like they're trying to kind of push the the switch more towards being like a mobile phone, so to speak. Mm-hmm. That's definitely their, their, uh, their competition. Because it, it's it that's where mobile gaming went for the 3ds. Oh yeah, the, the biggest competition was iPhone games and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that's yeah. partially why I said like if they do this iterative switch thing, the biggest thing and the biggest thing is that they have to keep that switch ahead of the phones for gaming purposes. Um, yep. And it's easy to do that per se because obviously any tech they put in it's going to be tailored for gaming. Um, oh, whereas yeah, yeah, where right, you're getting absolutely. where you're getting like a mobile phone, you know, Snapdragon processor and all the stuff that like is tailored for phones, not necessarily for gaming, even though it can do gaming. Um, so yeah, uh, we'll, we'll see. Obviously uh, it's a, it's a whole different field. Nintendo is in their own kind of in their own area where, where there isn't a lot of gaming specific, like we built this device just for gaming. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Nintendo, Nintendo likes to, Nintendo likes to kind of pave their own path. I mean, it, this, this is how much you know that Nintendo uh, this is one thing people may even appreciate about Nintendo, uh, even as frustrating as it might be. 2017, Nintendo launches a video game tablet, no multimedia capabilities. No Netflix, no Hulu, mm-hmm. no Amazon. Right. It's still All these standard things that come on everything. Mm-hmm. Even 3DS has Netflix. I, I, I think the, yeah, the 3DS having Netflix is weird. <laughs> it, uh, it, it doesn't work very well. <laughs> I, I, I think right now, because it's pre-holidays the switch is for uh, the early adopters and the people who um 
it's a supplementary console. Like, sure. Ev- like uh, almost everybody I know, uh, actually everybody I know who has a switch has another console. They're yeah. going to be playing their call of duties or, yeah, or, sure, or their sure. shadow of war. They're going to be playing that stuff on the PS4. So they're going to have their Netflix there too. Yeah. Yeah. Know? Once I, the kids I, start getting it and the kids who only have this one console, then yeah, Netflix or something like that would make sense. Yeah. Well, I, uh, my point in bringing that up was more so that Nintendo, I think, almost more than any of the other, you know, current game console creators, literally purpose builds their systems for gaming before everything else. Forget I mean, every other feature in the world. We are going to build you a portable gaming machine that plays console yeah. type quality games and that's what it does mm-hmm. like we'll the add, ps3 we'll, was a media machine yeah well, like we'll add other features to it yeah but i mean it's clear that, that it's clear that nintendo when it comes to games knows what they're doing i mean take a look at super mario run the the whole like the whole idea and i know that super mario run didn't do like super super well but if you look at price, the mobile game, expensive. yeah, and I think it, well, a lot of it was the price. But from a gameplay perspective, a lot of the things with the mobile games is like being able to play the game one handed. And they pushed that so hard. And that, that kind of when I saw that, I was like, wow, they actually know gaming. It's not I, I mean, <laughs> Super and, Mario and Run was for once in their life. Well, they might actually know. Gaming. I mean, if you think about all the unlimited runners out there, right? Um, on phones and then Nintendo does it with Mario and you're like oh this is just going to be like one of those cheap like you know duck under something or jump over something and, and just keep going until you die and all of a sudden you're just like no this looks like a new Super Mario Bros game yep. and it, it plays a lot like one and they're doing it with one hand how the hell did they do that because Nintendo is I mean as they continue to prove even when you don't think they can they know how to make games for it, yep. they don't come to a platform, and like the big thing with mobile was, oh, it's the first non Nintendo platform, right? To, to release a game on Nintendo wasn't going to do that without knowing what they're doing. Mm-hmm. And I they mean, don't they always know what the doing. waters yeah. a little bit with like Pokemon Go. Um, with and I, who, who did they team up with that? I can't read Niantic. Um, I, I and I think that was kind of them testing the waters to see. And and I mean, Pokemon Go was another one of those games that you could play one, you know, one handed. I will say, I, and maybe I just know too much. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Pokemon Go didn't really have anything to do with Nintendo. That was that was all Game Freak and the Pokemon Company. Nintendo, yeah, right. Nintendo, just the the only thing they had to do with it is that um, once it became a thing that was going to happen, uh, Satoru Iwata personally um, really loved the idea. So he offered some feedback on it. Um, it after, after Nintendo stock skyrocketed, they, after Pokemon Go, they came out and said, ah, guys, we actually had uh, almost nothing to do with that. And then their stock plummeted. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. The, Nintendo, like, <laughs> literally, it wasn't their idea. It wasn't yeah. their initiative. And Pokemon had already been re- releasing games. The Pokemon company had been releasing mobile phone games for like three years. Um, so <laughs> it really wasn't anything. It really wasn't anything out of the normal for Pokemon. Uh, in Nintendo uh, dedicating games like you know Super Mario Run, Fire Emblem Heroes, which has been a huge success revenue wise, um, actually even game wise, like I played a lot of it. It's it's pretty solid um, for the type of game it is. There are other games like it on the phone, but it's Fire Emblem, and for some reason it just works really really well. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know Pokemon Go for what it is, like even even though today it's not even close to as popular as it was during its peak, Pokemon Go is still like in the top ten most played apps out there um right they, they've really hit on something in terms of some of nintendo's ips just work really well on mobile devices animal crossing is one of them um and i'm really excited to see what uh whatever i know it's not going to be a full-blown animal crossing game but whatever they do as long as it's not like amiibo festival it, if they do something that's even like you know being able to build out your home and if you can connect that with an Animal Crossing game on Switch and just have all this cross compatibility, which Nintendo has always said, oh, we have these games to push our sales of games on, on our platforms. Okay, well, Animal Crossing, I think, is a perfect way to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, you could really have, like, you could play Animal Crossing on your Switch and also a little bit of that same game on your phone um, with some you know, its own unique features. I don't know. I don't know what Nintendo's going to do with Animal Crossing. I just really want Animal Crossing on Switch. <laughs> Any excuse to bring up Animal Crossing on Switch is something I want to keep doing. <laughs> Oh,